Hey, so let's have a look on to the question number 15. So here this question is 15 which is again for 3 marks. This says two infinitely long straight wires A1 and A2 carrying currents I and 2I flowing in the same directions are kept D distance apart. Where should a third straight wire A3 carrying current 1.5I be placed between A1 and A2 so that it experiences no net force due to A1 and A2. Does the net force acting on A3 depends on the current flowing through it? Let's try to find a solution for this particular question. So here to describe or to calculate the distance at which we should place the third wire you first need to draw this diagram. So here we are given these two wires A1 and A2 current through wire A1 is given as I1 and current through wire A2 is given to us as 2I and as you can clearly see here the current is flowing in the same direction. Further the question demands you to place a third wire A3 in between these two wires. So here I have placed this third infinitely long wire at a distance x from A1 such that the force experienced by this wire A3 due to A1 and A2 will be 0. Now first of all why this wire is experiencing force because this wire A3 is placed in the magnetic fields of wire A1 and A2 so it will be experiencing force because of both the wires. We have to find out this x that is the distance of this wire A3 so that the force that will be experienced by A3 due to A1 and A2 will be 0. Let us solve this question. Now further to calculate the force experienced by this wire A3 due to wire A1 we first need to calculate the magnetic field at this point that is the magnetic field here due to wire A1. And we know that the magnetic field at a point due to a straight infinite long wire is given by the formula mu naught i by 2 pi r where r is the perpendicular distance of the point. Now here that perpendicular distance we are considering it as x. So what is going to be b1 that is the magnetic field of wire a1 at this particular point that will be mu naught i by 2 pi x. Now the direction will be given by the right hand thumb rule. You need to point your thumb in the direction of the current and your fingers will do the job of letting you know the direction of the magnetic field which is into the plane. So here the magnetic field is cross. So you just have calculated the magnetic field and the direction of the magnetic field at this particular point and this wire A3 is placed in that magnetic field so it is going to experience the force which will be given by BIL. Now we need to focus here on the force experienced per unit length of wire A3. So we need to focus on F by L so that will simply be equal to BI where I is going to be the current through A3 and B is going to be the magnetic field in which it is placed. So it is placed in the magnetic field B1 and the current through wire A3 is given to us as 1.5i. So that will simply be equal to 1.5i into B1. So this is going to be the magnitude of F1. Okay. So here when you will substitute the value of V1 you will get this particular expression. Now we need to calculate F2 that will be the force experienced by wire A3 due to wire A2. To calculate that you again need to calculate the magnetic field of wire A2 and wire A2 when you will calculate its magnetic field that will come out to be again mu naught i by 2 pi r. Now in this case what is going to be i? Current flowing through wire A2 is given to us as 2i and the distance of wire A3 from wire A2 will simply be d minus x. So this distance 
is d minus x ok. So, you need to substitute here the values of that and b 2 will come out to be mu naught 2 i divided by 2 pi in the bracket d minus x and what is going to be its direction see here you need to point your thumb in the direction of the current and your fingers are pointing in the outward direction. So, it means b 2 is coming out of the plane that is why I have represented it with a dot ok. So, this is how we have calculated b 2. Now, what will be f 2? This will simply the product of the current flowing through wire a 3 and the magnetic field b 2 ok. So, when you will substitute the value of b 2 here you will get the magnitude of f 2 as this. Now, as per this question you need to put these two f 1 and f 2 as equal to each other because the net force on the wire a 3 is need to be 0. So, when you will equate these two you will calculate it further and the x will come out to be equal to d by 3 which means that at a distance of d by 3 from a 1 the force experienced by wire a 3 will be 0 ok. So, in this question you need to find out that distance where the force experienced by wire a 3 will be 0. So, you have done that job. Further this question asked you one more thing. This says does the net force acting on a 3 depends on the current flowing through it. Now, what is the force experienced per unit length of wire a 3? that is simply the product of the current flowing through this wire and the addition of the magnetic fields at that particular point where the wire A 3 is placed. Now, this I 3 you can clearly see this net force depends on I 3. So, yes it depends on the current flowing through the wire I 3 and that will be 0 only if the magnetic field is 0 ok. So, you need to write down there that the net force acting on A 3 depends it depends on the current flowing through it and it will be independent only when the net magnetic field is 0 ok. So, when this B 1 plus V 2 will be 0 then only this F net that is the force experienced by wire A 3 will be 0 otherwise it will be something because it depends on the current flowing through the wire ok. So, now let us have a look on to the marking scheme for this particular question. So, here when you will calculate this force F 1 experienced by the wire A 3 you will get half mark for this. You will get half mark for calculating F 2 so, when you will calculate this question till here that is after calculating B 2 you will calculate F 2 you will score another half mark. Then moving further when you will equate these two and you will calculate this distance you will get complete one mark for this complete calculation of calculating the distance x. Further when you will write down that how you can calculate the net force experienced by wire A 3 that is for writing this expression you will get half mark and then for explaining this expression that is for writing that it depends on I 3 and then it will be 0 only if the net magnetic field at that particular point is 0 then only the net force experienced by wire A 3 is 0 for that you are going to get half mark. So, you will get half mark for writing this expression and half mark for explaining this expression. So, this is how you are going to score 3 out of 3 marks for this particular question. I hope you have well understood the solution for this question. Let us move on to the solution for the next question.